In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to electrochemical cells. Um, this is going to form, electrochemical cells are going to form the bulk of this chapter. Uh, after doing the balancing part, electrochemical cells are going to be how we're going to relate um, the concepts that we learned in chapter 18 to the chemical nature of uh, electron transfer. So uh, an electrochemical cell um, is a system consisting of electrodes uh, dipped into an electrolyte and um, this is going to allow for a chemical th this so this setup is going to allow for a chemical reaction to take place Um, and in particular, there's a couple of things that we kind of have to add to this. Generally, this involves these involve an electron transfer. So when we're talking about electrochemical cells, we're talking about reactions that are redox in nature. So these involve an, elect an electron transfer from the anode to the cathode. Um, and then also these can either generate or consume electrical energy. And if we remember, electrical energy comes from the fact that we can move electrons through a field, which is voltage. So the movement of electrons through that field is either going to be how we're going to charge something up, like the battery on your cell phone, for example, is, is a good example of an electrochemical cell um, because it's a reversible process. So um, when you turn your phone on for the very first time, the battery is already charged up. It's, it has chemical energy stored um in the battery and then that chemical energy gets converted to electrical energy by allowing for the transfer of electrons from the anode to the cathode the transfer of the electron the electrons from the anode to the cathode um the, those electrons are moving across the voltage field that's what powers the device while it's running then eventually the battery dies the chemical energy is used up so you have to plug your phone into the wall and you take electrical energy that comes from the wall um, to reverse that electrochemical cell reaction. So the, the electrons are forced to go in the opposite direction against the direction that they would want to go. Um, and you basically put the chemical energy back in by transferring the electrical energy from the wall into chemical energy in the battery. Okay, so there are two types of cells. So, um, and we're going to relate these cells to exactly what I was just talking about. So, uh, when it comes to types of cells, we have one which is the galvanic cell. So, these are going to these types of cells are spontaneous, meaning that if you hook them up, the reaction will take place without um, any. Uh, external force, right? So by spontaneous, th these can do work. And that work is in the form of electrical energy. So delta G is going to equal a minus. Um, we know that from the previous chapter. The K is going to be definitely greater than 1 because we're going to favor products. And um, the amount of work that can be done is proportional to delta G. So the, the, the smaller delta G is, the bigger the negative number is, the more work the cell can do. Um, so those, these types of cells, they're the ones that generate energy. So the, the analog of this is a, a battery in discharge mode. So a battery in discharge, when you turn your phone on, that battery, that electrochemical cell, that process just happens on its own. The transfer of electrons from the anode to the cathode, that is what makes the whole phone work. It, the phone takes that, that, chem that electrical energy that's coming from the battery and runs. We don't have to do anything to make that happen besides hit the on button, which just allows the, opens the, which closes the circuit and allows the electrons to flow. So then the, an electrolytic cell is the opposite. This is the a non-spontaneous reaction. 
So this requires work, um, which comes in the form of electrical energy, meaning we have to put electrical energy in to make the cell work, and this uh, to make the cell work. And so we can think of some things like delta G in this case is going to be a positive, K is going to be less than one, and um, the amount of work that needs to be done. done on the cell is again proportional to delta G. So in this case, the bigger the positive is for the delta G, the more electrical energy you have to put on. And so this would be your battery and charge mode. So we're now going to look at an example of a voltaic cell. So we're going to start this chapter with voltaic cells. Um, and we're going to look at an example of a voltaic cell and what's going on in a voltaic cell. Then later on, we'll look at electrolytic cells. So this slide sh shows a typical depiction for a voltaic cell. So um, I've, I've kind of broken down all of the main parts of the cell. And then we're going to take a look at what's going on, kind of zoom in on the electrodes and uh, see what's going on. So let's just kind of orient ourselves to... Um, the cell itself and what's, what's kind of going on inside the cell. So what we have is we basically have two beakers. Um, one we call the anode and one we call the cathode. So this one on the left over here is the anode. This one on the right over here is the cathode. And we if we remember um, from back in chapter four, uh, anode and cathode, this is basically the cathodes where reduction is going to take place, where reduction is going to take place. And the anode is where oxidation is going to take place. So there's that anox red cat um, thing that people use to kind of remember this. Okay, so we have two buckets and they've got solutions. So in this in this one bucket we've got a solution of zinc two plus, and in this other bucket we've got a solution of copper two plus. That's why it has that blue color. And then we we dip in there uh, copper metal and zinc metal. And those are our electrodes. So the electrolytes, so this over here is an electrolyte. That's typically going to have your ions in it. And the electrode is going to be the solid thing. That's the metal. That's typically what, what, how it works. And then they're connected to each other by the salt bridge. And we're going to talk about what the salt bridge does at the end of this discussion. So let's start at the anode. So we know what the anode oxidation is taking place. So if we have zinc metal and we have zinc 2 plus and we want to write a half reaction and we know it's oxidation, well, we're starting with zinc and we're starting with zinc solid and we have zinc 2 plus as our product. So we're going to be producing two electrons. Those two electrons, as you can see, come out of the cell. So they are a product of the reaction and they go out. Now, at a microscopic level, in order to do this, what must be happening is, is zinc is going from zinc metal to zinc ion in the solution. And you can see that there. So um, this electrode is going to dissolve over time. So we're going to basically, this electrode is going to eventually wear away completely and we're not going to have any zinc left. So uh, the zinc electrode dissolves. And this is where we produce electrons. So at the anode, because we're doing oxidation, we're ha we have a net uh, we have a net production of electrons that are coming out. So they their electrons are being transferred from the anode to the cathode. So that's what's going on at the anode. Now those electrons are going to travel through an external circuit, which is not shown, but I'm going to put that in. And that external circuit's going to be your cell phone. So if this were if this were the battery that was charging your cell phone, it's it's not what they use. They use uh, lithium ion batteries. Um, in cell phones, but same idea. Uh, that external circuit is where your load is going to be. So those electrons are going to go through your phone. They're going to um, give off their energy into the phone in the form of electrical energy to power all the different components of the phone. And then they come back to the cathode where they're going to do some reduction. So we know that at the cathode we're doing a reduction. So the, the ions in that solution are copper 2 plus. So we have to give those ions um, we have to give those ions electrons in order to do the reduction. So we have copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives copper solid. 
So that's going to be the electron that's taking place in the, that's going to be the electrochemical reaction that takes place in the cathode. So since we're making copper metal, the copper electrode is going to grow. It's going to gain in terms of mass. And uh, this is the electrode that accepts electrons. So if you want to think about this in terms of signs, we give this electrode a negative sign and we give this electrode a positive sign. The reason for that is because the anode is where our electrons are coming from. This is going to be our source of electrons. So it's basically to an onlooker that's looking at that electrode, they're going to see electrons coming out of it. So we say that's negative. The positive electrode or the cathode is positive because the electrons are going toward it. So electrons are going to go toward the positive side of the cell. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the salt bridge. So the salt bridge's job is to maintain charge neutrality. So what you can see is, is basically at the, uh, at the anode, we're producing zinc 2 plus in solution and we're sending electrons away. So we're starting to build up these positive charges on the left side. And on the right side, as the electrons come around, the copper 2 plus is leaving the solution and going to metal form. So we're ba we basically have an excess of positives on the left and a, and a, and a lack of positives on the right. So what's going to happen is, is ions are going to transfer across and the positives are going to move in the same direction as the negatives to maintain that charge neutrality. So positive ions flow toward the cathode and negative ions flow toward the anode. And that's because we're generating positives in the anode and we're consuming positives in the cathode. So this gives you an overview of what an electrochemical cell is um, and all the parts and, and all these things. So let's look at what might be driving this reaction to take place. So why, why does this reaction happen spontaneously? Well, we know, let's look at some things that we know from back into the first semester. We know the activity series. So we know that certain metals are more reactive than other metals. Like for example, we know that among all the metals we tested in the activity series experiment, copper was the least reactive. And like metals like zinc and magnesium and calcium, those tended to be more reactive. Um, so that sort of qualitative picture that we had from the activity series is actually re very relevant here. Um, so copper is less active than zinc. So actually what this tells us is that in terms of who wants electrons more, um, we can basically say that copper wants electrons more than zinc. And this is going to come down to something called the uh, standard cell potential. The standard cell potential is basically a measurement of how much a cell wants an, an electron. These, and these are all listed as reductions. So the higher the potential, the more that electrode wants to be reduced. So what we're going to find out is that copper has a much higher standard reduction potential for that uh, electrode than the zinc. So that is what's going to drive the reduction of copper more so than the reduction of zinc.